Welcome to Unit 6, Video 2, Numbers to Know. By the end of this video, you should know what the atomic number is and where to find it on the periodic table. You should know what the atomic mass is and where to find it on the periodic table. You should know what the mass number is and how to calculate it. And you should be able to determine the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons, given the information on the periodic table. Let's start by defining each of these numbers. Then we'll look at where to find them on the periodic table. The atomic number is defined as the number of protons in an atom. The atomic number never changes for a given element. Any atom with eight protons will always be an oxygen atom. It essentially determines what element we have. You cannot change the number of protons in an atom without changing the element. In fact, we don't have the means in chemistry to change the number of protons in an atom. That's not a chemical process. This is also equal to the number of electrons when the atom is neutral. We'll talk more about what it means for an atom to be neutral versus charged a little bit later. But for now, we can assume that all atoms that we look at are neutral Therefore, their atomic number will be both the number of protons and the number of electrons. Atomic mass, or atomic weight, whichever you prefer, is the mass of one mole of an element. We've already talked about this. The atomic mass is the mass of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of any element. You'll notice that these numbers are not even numbers. This is because they're actually a weighted average of all of the isotopes of a given element. As it turns out, not every atom of a particular element is exactly identical. It is possible for them to have different masses, which we'll learn about in the next video. These are called isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of the same element with a different number of neutrons and therefore a different mass. This will all be covered in a future video, but for now what you need to know is that we take a weighted average of all these isotopes masses to get the atomic mass. Finally, there's the mass number, which is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in an atom. This is essentially a rounded version of the atomic mass, so it will always be a whole number. Sometimes it's convenient to write element names followed by their mass number, since it's possible for different atoms of the same element to have different mass numbers. So here, carbon-12, carbon-12, is carbon with a mass number of 12. Neon-20 is neon with a mass number of 20. Let's take a look at what these numbers mean on the atomic scale. We've already said that the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. It's also equal to the number of electrons in a neutral atom. In this atom here, it looks as though some of the protons are kind of hiding behind some neutrons, so you can't see all of them. But if this is a neutral atom, there should be both six protons and six electrons. The mass number is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. This accounts for most of the mass of the atom. As we've said before, electrons have negligible mass as compared to the mass of protons and neutrons. So if we add up the number of protons and the number of neutrons, we'll be accounting for almost all of the mass of the atom. And again, the atomic number always determines the identity of the element. So where can we find all this information from the periodic table? Here's an example of a typical box from the periodic table. The whole number that's generally located in the center at the top is the atomic number. Again, the number of protons and the number of electrons in a neutral atom. The name of the element is also generally written, as well as its symbol. Element symbols are made up of always one capital letter, and if they include a second letter, that letter is lowercase. We also have the atomic weight, or the atomic mass, which, is, remember, is the weighted average of all of the isotopes of the element. That's generally written down the bottom. You'll be able to tell it from the atomic number because it's usually not a whole number. 
Let's look at an example. Given the box from the periodic table for fluorine, as well as the name, fluorine 19, we can fill in this entire chart. Starting with the atomic number, which is 9, and the atomic mass, which I'm going to round off to 18.998, feel free to do the same, and that unit is grams. The number of protons is equal to the atomic number. The number of electrons in a neutral atom, with this, which this is, is also equal to the atomic number. You'll be told when it's not a neutral atom. The mass number, recall, is written at the end of the name up here, fluorine 19. And finally, for the number of neutrons, you're going to have to do a little bit of math. Since the, the mass number is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, if we take the mass number and subtract the number of protons, we get the number of neutrons, which is 10. Here's two more examples to try on your own. Pause the video here and try filling in these charts. When you come back, I'll reveal the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we learned what the atomic number is and where it's located on the periodic table. Recall that the atomic number is the number of protons and the number of electrons as long as the atom is neutral. Also recall that the atomic number determines what element you have. Then, we learned what the atomic mass was and where it's located. Recall that this is the weighted average of all of the isotopes, or all of the atoms of different masses of an element. Then, we learned what the mass number was and how to calculate it. The mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And finally, we learned how to determine the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons given the information on the periodic table.